What's going on everybody, Mortem here, and today we are talking about the backer content in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Now this isn't an evaluation of the quality of that content, merely what that content actually is. And I did want to mention, because I saw some confusion about this here and there, the easiest way to verify what is backer content is actually just to go to the main menu of the game, hit credits, and in the special thanks section they actually do have a list of everything that is backer content. Now a good chunk of that content is actually pretty easy to miss because a lot of it is items and a few character portraits are actually backer content. But we're also going to go over the quests and the NPCs and things that were in fact created by backers. First up we're going to start with the items simply because there are quite a few of them. Now I'm not going to show every single one of these but I will mention all of them and then talk about some of the ones I'm more familiar with. So first up there's Draven's hat. This is a wizard hat that actually looks like a traditional wizard hat. There are the bonuses to demon related books. So if you're unaware if you actually read books that are about demons and things you can get bonuses from them and this was actually a backer related thing. The prismatic ring that you can find that allows you to cast a prismatic spray I believe is a high level spell. So many times per day is a backer item. The undying love of the hope bringer which is an item you can find at the very end of act four. Hawk size which I'm honestly not familiar with. The cloak of the ancient herald which I remember but I don't offhand remember where you actually get it. The Triceratops statuette, which most people are familiar with because this gives you access to Bismuth, the Triceratops. You find this during the Siege on Dresden. And there's Makaraka's Malefic Manuscript. The name sounds familiar, but offhand I don't remember what it is. The Duality of Conjuration and Summoning. This is an item you can find under the Lost Chapel near where you talk to Zacharias, which allows you to potentially summon a couple of different things and is overall a pretty interesting item. There's the Hat of Heartening Song. This is an item you can find on Sila's personal quest in Act 2, and it gives you buffs to Bard songs. The Stormlord's Resolve is a pair of bracers you get from Blackwater, if my memory serves. Then there's the Tankard of Free Spirit, which helps you summon an Azada with a bonus if you are yourself an Azada. You can find that at the end of Act 1 in the Great Garrison. There's the Signet of House Vespertilio. This is an item you can find in Act 1 in Market Square. There's Aridin's Wrath. This is a Paladin item that you can find in the Green Gates in Act 3, which will modify your Smite Evil. Hodo's Torch, which I'm not familiar with. White Wind's Cloak, which I've found, but I don't remember what it does. And then there's the Book of Dreams, which I believe you find in Lost Chapel, if my memory serves. And then there's Jaws of the Jackal, which you can find in the Slave Market in Act 4, which augments your summoning a bit. Now there's also a few monuments in game that you can find. I know where two of these are. There are two names listed without a monument themselves, so I don't know if they made it in game or what the deal there is. But one of those monuments you can find in Act 5 at a place called Desolate Thicket. It is a statue of a chicken. And then the other one is the Reaper statue in the abandoned mansion during Wolgif's personal quest in Act 4. Then next up we have three of the familiar pets that you can find. That is to say animals you can find in the world that you can put on your character's quick slot and then use them as a familiar. Three of those came from backers. Those being the Pipe Fox, the Imp, and Jarzagax, which is the dragon you can find or the baby dragon that you can find. All three of those were made by backers. The Pipe Fox is during Wolgif's quest in Act 1. The Imp you can also find under Lost Chapel like literally right next to Zacharias, and Jarzagax you can get in Act 5 if you follow the Dusk of Dragons quest. Now there are also a few NPC portraits that were part of backer content as well. These include Hulrun, Wilser Garms, Odan, and Hylor. All of those NPC portraits were made by backers, as well as one PC portrait, but honestly I'm not sure which one it was. And now we get into the beefier stuff, and that is of course the quests and NPCs. Now technically there's two NPCs that were made by backers. One of which I knew about, and then the other one I'm a little confused about the labeling on, but Krinuk the Kobold, which is a kobold you can run into during Act 2, who offers advice should you choose it if you come back and talk to him every once in a while. He was of course made by a backer. I've heard he can show up later on the Gold Dragon quest, but I haven't seen that personally. And then the other one, interestingly enough, is Kalesa. Kalesa is part of the Outcast quest line that starts in Act 1 and finishes in Act 3, which involves you finding an elf named Kalesa. And that's the part I find interesting because the part that's backer content is just listed as being Kalesa herself and not the quest. So I'm curious if the quest was already planned and they let someone create the NPC that then went into that quest. But again, that's just purely speculation on my part. I'm honestly not sure. But nonetheless, that quest... At the very least, Kalesa specifically was backer content. And then we get into the part of this people actually probably clicked on the video for, and that is which quests are in fact 
made by backers. So first up, we have the quest A Refuge from the Present. This is a quest that pops in Act 5, because when you return to Dresden from Act 4, you'll hear that one of your captains, Captain Selkind, who leads a group of mercenaries, abandoned Dresden. And if you track him down, this will lead you to the quest A Refuge from the Present, or at least the bulk of it. You'll get the quest basically immediately when you come back from Act 4. And should you choose to pursue that quest, it'll lead you to Captain Selkind. And this quest leads you to a forced turn-based battle under the Shrine of the Three. And it kind of has some Fallout references and stuff, so it was kind of entertaining. Although I will admit it did kind of feel a little different than the rest of the game for sure. And then the other quests are, for starters, Dusk of Dragons and Dawn of Dragons. So this one actually surprised me because I didn't realize this was backer content. I didn't even suspect it was backer content, I mean. Because this quest is actually tied to the Gold Dragon Mythic Path, but everyone can actually do it. But because it was tied to that Mythic Path, I really didn't even consider that this might actually be backer content. So for starters, the same person who made the Jarzagax familiar also was involved with making this quest. In Act 3, you will be visited by a man named Lathamus who will ask you to investigate a dragon burial ground, which you can go do. It's a pretty easy quest, to be honest with you. You just go there, find a door. That's it. Quest resolved. He tells you he's going to look into it. And then in Act 5, as long as you did that first part in Act 3, and even if you didn't, but you took Gold Dragon Path, you'll then get the next part which is the other half of the quest where you go back to the dragon burial ground. And it turns out that Lathamus is actually a black dragon trying to get at an ancient dragon egg, which turns out to be Jarzagax, the familiar that you can get. And you can kind of deal with that situation how you want. Um, again, if you are on the gold dragon path, this is actually mandatory. It's part of that path. I mean, I guess it's not mandatory. You can complete the game without doing it. But if you want to do your transformation, it is mandatory. And then second to last, we have Cold Waters Dark Waves. So this starts in Act 2 with a very simple quest to go to a place called Chili Creek, or I should say it starts in Act 1 because you talk to a guy at the Defender's Heart called uh, Jerno, I think his name is. But you'll talk to him. He tells you that he's a cleric on his way to Chili Creeks, which is like where he was assigned or whatever. And you can go visit him there in Act 2. And there's just a real simple quest where you kill a very weakened Hydra. There's a lot of weird people talking about how they worship something called the Icy Rill. And you're like, okay, whatever, this is weird. And you go on about the game. And then in Act 5, well, in Act 3 and Act 5, someone will come visit you from that village. In Act 5, that person is asking you for help. So if you go back to the village, you get the other half of it, which is Dark Waves. And it turns out the Icy Rill is actually a trio of hags that are forcing the villagers to trade their firstborns occasionally in exchange for, you know, better crops, keeping the village safe, that kind of thing, protection from demons, etc. And this quest is actually made by a backer. This one didn't surprise me. I kind of figured with the way the weird intro to it happened in Act 2, it was probably something like that, because it kind of stood out a little bit. And then last but not least, everybody's favorite quest, The Last Gift of a Brilliant Mind. So this is probably more known to people as Blackwater. In Act 3, you will be visited in your citadel by someone claiming that they might be able to help you out with the army and everything, and they will ask you to visit a place called Blackwater. You go there, you get trapped. It is considered one of the harder places to do in Act 3 because everything there has a very high AC and has regeneration, which requires you to either use lightning damage or hit everything with a coup de grace. And these fights actually see you interacting with things around the environment to shut off like elevators and stuff that are bringing in more enemies. So overall, combined with the futuresque aesthetic of the map itself, this quest stands out to a lot of people for a lot of reasons. And it might come as no surprise, it turns out that this is actually a backer quest made by none other than Co Carnage himself. So there you go, guys. There is a list of the backer content you can find in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. So if any of those quests ever felt kind of strange to you, there you go. That's the reason why. So with that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.